The adjudicatory chamber of the Independent Ethics Committee of FIFA has banned Kwesi Nyante, she former president of the Ghana Football Association, GFA, for life for more football-related activities at both national and international levels. Mr. Nyantichi had initially been suspended from his position by World Football's governing body after the release of an investigative piece from journalist Anas Armiyao Anas. Additionally, a fine in the amount of 500,000 Swiss francs has been imposed on Mr. Nyantichi. Earlier, my colleague Nathan Kwao spoke to head of current affairs at City FM and City TV, Gottfried Akutubuafu. What basically this means is that we have an end to number 12, at least on the footballing side. Now we, we recall that uh, June 6th, uh, Nas Arimiao Nas revealed to the world his number 12 expose, yeah. which dealt with all kinds of things in football. It wasn't just in Ghana, it was across the world. Now he filed a petition with FIFA, making a, uh, a litany of complaints against Kusinia and Tichi. Now FIFA initially suspended Kusinia and Tichi for a period of time. Okay. Now once that elapsed, they increased the duration of the suspension, whilst they are arbitration chamber and disciplinary chamber dealt with the matter yeah. and the result of that arbitration is what we have today the lifetime ban from football at every single level for mr kusinia tichi and a significant fine of almost half a million dollars five hundred thousand swiss francs that's almost four hundred and ninety thousand u.s dollars i think and we move on to other stories and beneficiaries of the youth and afforestation program under the youth employment authority in the eastern region are threatening to stage a series of demonstrations if the allowances are not paid to them the beneficiaries who held a press conference to register their displeasure with the government over its failure to pay the allowances from june this year are also demanding improved working conditions city news's neil niamati kanaku was at the press conference and reports According to the beneficiaries, the non-payment of the allowances, coupled with recent economic hardship, is making life very difficult for them. According to them, lack of safety equipment and other logistics needed to make their work very easy and efficient have not been supplied by government. That as we speak here, can you believe that we have other numerous things that we are not getting? Just simple as cutlass, they can provide some of us. We go to forests to pick sands, I mean soil for planting, with our own manpower. We have to go to a, 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 a refuse dam to collect it. Our health is at stake. But we still do this with our whole hearts and gladly continue doing it. The group called on government to fulfill promises made to them or they will go all out to frustrate government by going on a peaceful demonstration and also besiege the street offices of the YEA and the Forestry Commission. Now a group calling itself United Krobo Foundation of Manya and Yilo is calling on the Volta River Authority to supply the people of Manya and Yilo Krobo with free electricity. According to the group, the construction of the Akosombo and Bong Dams has created discomfort and contributed to hardship and poverty in their community. City News's Eastern Regional Correspondent Neil Ni Amate Kanaku was at the press conference and has more in this report. According to the group, the Volta River Authority, VRA, has failed to fulfill agreements made with them during the resettlement process for the provision of schools, hospitals and other social amenities. The secretary of the group, Griffin Samuel, who addressed the press conference, called on management of ERA to convene a meeting within two weeks to address their challenges or face their wrath. VRA has benefited tremendously from the Kobo, but they deliberately undermine the progress of the Kobo whose lands were used for the construction of the Akosomo and Palm Dams respectively. We are giving VRA two weeks to meet the Kobo United Foundation at the negotiation table to bring lasting peace. Kobos want to enjoy free supply of electricity from VRA. Let's get to some other stories and members of the coalition on RTI are accusing government of halting their march to parliament earlier today. Members of the media coalition on RTI, a group championing the passage of the right to information bill, were today thrown out of parliament when they attempted to enter the house to observe proceedings. The group expressed shock at the turn of events, explaining that they had earlier communicated their intentions to the Public Relations Department of Parliament. The convener of the group, Gilbert Boyfield, believes 
what transpired is a deliberate ploy by government to frustrate their efforts at forcing parliament to pass the right to information bill into law. They said we cannot, we should remove the t-shirt and leave it outside before they will allow us to go inside. We cannot even put a t-shirt in our bag. I mean, <laughs> so far as they are concerned, the t-shirt uh, uh, symbolize demonstration. The director of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Kwame Esiedu, has debunked claims of financial misappropriation against him. The director is accused of organizing a dinner for eight persons with 10,000 Ghana CDs and the renovation of a two-bedroom apartment at the cost of one million Ghana CDs. Addressing the press, the director of the Ghana Maritime Authority described the allegations as false. Referring to these documents, the director of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Kwame Asidu, was confident of certain records straight while demystifying claims of misappropriation leveled against him. He has been accused of financial misappropriation and conflict of interest in the issuance of contracts. With support from other management members and workers of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Mr. Asidu reacted to the allegations against his office. The amount of money and meetings that took place, that is backed by our records in the file, that has all the things that is supported for those who want to come and see it. The original is here, and there is no eight participants. So the person who gave or stole the documents was only doing it as a matter of mischief. Resign to allow thorough investigations into the killings at Japikrum. This is the demand from a youth group in the Japikrum traditional area in Puasumai Alliance to the MC of Jamai South, Al Haji Abu. Clashes in the area led to the death of three persons during the celebration of a traditional festival earlier this month. At a press conference today, spokesperson for Mpuasuman Alliance, Dr. Antonia Kwaje, said the posture of the MC will undermine ongoing investigations. We believe the municipal chief executive of German South Municipality, Anabo Alaji Abu, is complicit in the brutal shooting incident. The police who had been protecting the possession since it began were all of a sudden withdrawn by the MCE for a meeting. Suffice to say, the shooting happened within five minutes of the withdrawal of the police force. 